before I was a little more superstitious about stuff and, and um, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, have, everything has to be like just perfect, you know, and, and I still kind of am, you know, it's like, there's sometimes that if, if something's happening, I, I get a little like irritated about something, but for the most part, I learned how to relax and, and just kind of go with the flow and know that at the end of the day, all the work that I've done was put in my camp and, um, you know, the result will be the result no matter what it is. What we're doing, why we do it, baby. Nobody does it any better. This is your night, your fight. You get it right, son. All that hard work, all that time in the gym, now it's time to get it done. Yep. The thing about fighting, for two months, we're doing everything for ourselves. Like, nobody else is gonna get in that damn cage with us, you know? So for two months straight, before a fight, we're some of the most selfish people out there, and we have every right to be. So after the fights, or even leading up to the fights, it gets even that much more intense, you know, leading up to the fight. I fought Chad in April, and I went back a week later to train for 146. Uh, just as an alternate, and then I went back two weeks later to train for my fight with Ben Rothwell. That got got cut a week before the fight, and then I went home for two weeks, and then came back and did another seven-week camp for this fight. So it's like <laughs> rough, bro. <laughs> you know what you guys have uh, been chatting about so far? They're from New York. You got a fight tomorrow. Yeah. Got a fight tomorrow. You guys came in. They saw a uh, big foot in our hotel. He looked a little scared. Oh, did you? He did, did yeah. He? Right, he didn't yeah. really look as big as I expected. You know, You're actually a lot taller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a lot taller, but he's a big dude. You know, how like, did you shake his hand? Hands. No. His, yeah. his no. hands, like, I didn't want his to. hands <laughs> are like this big. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. With Silva, there's little things that he does that we just have to be careful about. In the long run, I'm just training to train. I'm just training to, to fight like I'm gonna fight. Um, my style isn't gonna change regardless who it is. Um, you know, I'm one of the taller guys in the division, have one of the longer reaches, so I'm just gonna use that in every single fight I can. Travis Hoppa Brown versus Antonio Bigfoot Silva. 246 for Travis Brown. I think usually the guys that feel like they have to try and intimidate somebody are usually the ones that feel like they have something to make up for, you know? I go there, I, I, I do my stare down, and I'm good with just walking away. But if somebody wants to get in there and get in my face and try to posture on me to make me back down, they're gonna get it right back. And, and that's what happened today, you know, he got you know, where we were like touching noses and all this kind of stuff, you know, and Dana had to come in and at that point, I'm not gonna back down. If you're gonna, if you're gonna bring it up like that, you better be, be able to back it up the next day. What's up, Zach? Can I have a autograph, man? Yeah, for sure, bro. Thanks, dude. Bowser, well, where you at, man? Uh, hold on, brother. Holy Santa Claus, shit. Take a picture. Thanks, man. Can I get a picture with yeah, Juba? Sure. Yeah. That's all right. I'll take a picture. Yeah. Good luck, dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> Fans coming up to you wanting to take a picture or have an autograph or, you know, just talk for a little bit or something is, for me, it's, that means I'm doing my job right. It means that they're interested in me as a fighter and, and you know, they're excited to watch me fight. That's why they bought the ticket, you know, to, to go and spend a the night there waiting for me to get into the cage and, and knock somebody out. Uh, today, you know, during the stare down, uh, my opponent kind of got a little close, and uh, you know he wanted to he wanted to keep an eye on me. So you know, just showing him that he's got a fight tomorrow. He can't look away. You know, he can't he can't submit like that. So he knows he knows what's coming down tomorrow, and uh, look forward to it.
And I try to eat like pretty plain, even though this is curry, but it's still like eight hours before my fight, so. My next meal will be pretty bland. Just try to eat stuff that gives me energy. The day of my fight, I'll be, in the morning, I'll be waking up and I'll just be warming up with my coach and really just going over last minute game plan things and you know, just break a sweat, hitting pads, doing a little bit of wrestling, um, staying focused on, on our game plan. Um, that way, when I'm in the cage, it's just second nature. I don't have to think about it, it just happens. You know, it helps you kind of get over that first hump in the day where, where you know, you might feel a little sluggish, a little slow or something like that. That way, when you're warming up, right before you walk out for your fight, you're already kind of on your second wind. You're like, okay, I'm ready to go. This is it. There's nothing holding me back. And you're walking into that arena knowing that you're ready to, ready to fight. Brown, what's up, baby? What's up? All the way down, all the way down in, baby. Yes, sir. All the way down in. Coach, that, that spin kick's coming nasty. Yeah. With uh, Coach Jackson and Coach Wink has really um, has really helped me in a couple different ways. Uh, you know, they they have kind of like the perfect yin and yang tactics, I guess you could you could say. But really, it's the environment that they've created in the gym, also with uh, with my training partners and um, the environment where the gym is. You know, definitely my striking has come around a lot. I've really learned what my body can do, and I think Coach Wink has had a lot to do with that. He's like, oh, you like that? Yeah, let's work it. Let's make it a weapon, you know, and, and go out and perform and do what I do best. And I already have the mentality that I'm gonna go in that cage and I'm gonna go in that cage to hurt you. I'm not your friend, I'm not your family. And even if I was, if you're in that cage with me, on fight day, I'm still gonna try to hurt you because you're gonna try to do the same thing to me. pisses me off that something like that's gonna make a name off of me. You know, he's, he's my first defeat. And, uh, you know, being, being cordial and all that kind of shit put aside, that motherfucker doesn't beat me on my worst day. You know, I got injured in the fight and uh, I wouldn't mind that being my first fight back. I want that fight back, everybody knows it. Um, and just fucking, all it's gonna do is motivate the fuck out of me. If I wasn't motivated before, I am now. My whole thing is, if he was better than me today, I, would, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But the fact that I got, that I got injured and I was, I was hurt in the first fucking 30 seconds of the fight, just fucking pisses me off. And uh, for him to make a staple in his, in his career off of my name, makes it even worse. <laughs> 